Hi, and in today's Microsoft Word tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this poster in Word. So the first thing I need to do is to insert my graphics. So I'm going to go up to the Insert tab. I'm going to go along to the Shapes icon here, click on the drop down, and select the square under Rectangles. Then all I'm going to do is just click and drag. Just going to make that a little bit wider and the way I do that is hover my cursor over one of the middle boxes and just drag out. Once I've done that I'm just going to take off the border. Each shape that's inserted into Word has a boundary or a border line. Can't quite see it because it's blue but highlight your shape, go up to shape format, go along to this icon here, click on the drop down and select no outline. Now you can of course keep that outline if you want to and you can change its colour and you can adapt this and customise it but for now I'm going to get rid of that border. The next thing I'm going to do is to copy and paste this shape. Now there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can highlight the shape, go to the home tab, go to the copy icon here and then click paste. That's the very long-winded way to do it. The other way to do it is to hit Command or Control C on your keyboard and Command or Control V. That's another way to do it. Or the quickest way is just to hold down your Alt key on your keyboard, click and drag. So now I just want to have five of these all in a row. Perfect. The next thing I want to do is to change the colour of each of these rectangles. So I'm going to select the first one and then I'm going to go up to Shape Fill. Make sure you're on Shape Format. Go along to Shape Fill and click on the drop down. Now with colours you have lots of different options. So you have the presets here, standard colours here, and these are my recent colours. Now the way in which I get my recent colours is to go to More Fill Colours. When you go to more fill colours, you'll be presented with the colour wheel. And here, let me just move this slider. So this slider here goes from the brightest to the darkest shade of the colour you've picked. So let's just put it on the brightest. And use this cursor to move around the colour wheel to pick the colour of your choice. Now, if you're anything like me and you're really not quite sure about colours, then what you can do is you can go onto the internet and you can put in colour palettes. So you hop onto Google, input colour palettes, press enter, then go up to the images icon at the top, and then you have an awful lot of colour palettes to choose from. Now, again, across the top here, you've also got different options, or you can put vibrant colour options if you want to, vibrant colour palettes or pastel colour palettes, whatever you want. Then when you've done that, then you need to take a screenshot now in some cases your device will take a whole screenshot of the page, it doesn't matter, as long as the colours are in it, it doesn't matter. So for example, if I wanted to take a screenshot of this colour palette here, on a Mac you hit Shift, Command and 4, your cursor will change to a cross, and then you just click and drag it across that palette. Now I've taken a screenshot, I can close this down, just cancel this for a minute. Then all you do is click and drag your screenshot into your document. Now, that was the one I took a screenshot of, but the one I'm using for this poster is this one. When you've dragged it into your document, you won't be able to move it around. Right click, go down to wrap text, click in front of text and then you can move it around your document and move it out of the way. Now the great thing about these colour palettes is when I now go ahead and change the colour of these rectangles, I've got the colours down here that I can use. So let's just click on our first shape, go back up to Shape Format, go to Shape Fill, click on the drop down, and select More Fill Colours. Go to this eyedropper tool here, which is a fabulous tool. As it turns into a circle, you can hover it over your colours, and when you've got the colour of your choice, let's pick the blue, 
just click and you can see it appears here in this square Then just click OK and then you've matched your color and then just go ahead and do that for all of the colors Perfect, so now I've got all of my colors. I'm just going to move all of these rectangles into position. So I just want them slightly staggered. Now Word does quite a good job of clicking these shapes into place. And so generally your step spacing will be the same. You can generally eyeball it and it will click into place. Now the gaps in between we can sort now so I just want those gaps to be slightly smaller so all I'm going to do is try and move that over just a little bit just move that step up a bit so I think generally those steps are okay now I'm going to highlight all of my rectangles and the way in which I do that is to select the first one hold my command or control key down and click the rest of the rectangles and you'll highlight all of them. Then go up to the alignment tool here, click on the drop down and then select distribute horizontally and this will ensure that the gaps between them all are identical. Before you click off, go back up to group, click on the drop down and select group. Now the whole of these rectangles will be one group where you can just simply copy and paste the entire group rather than having to go through that process all over again. Now we've finished with our colours, we can just click on it and delete it. And now we can copy and paste this graphic. So I'm just going to hold my Alt key down and drag. And I want four of these, so it's highlighted both of these, so I'm just going to click and drag again. And now I've got four. Now I'm going to put them in my design, but of course you can do anything with these now. You can just have one, you can have two, it's entirely your choice. So I'm just going to click on the first one and drag it up to about here. And then I'm going to do the same on the opposite side. So I'm going to move this down. The distance here is roughly the same distance here, and the height of this smallest rectangle here is roughly the same as this one here. Next thing I'm going to do is turn this one around. Now if I go up to the top here, you can see there's a circular arrow. If I click on that, hold my shift key down, and then rotate it, you can see that it will rotate in increments. Make sure that you rotate it in the direction where this colour and this colour match if you want to do the same design. So then I'm going to move this up here, and then I'm going to try to get the gap here from the edge of the page to this yellow rectangle here, the same as this gap here. So I think that's about right. You can move this closer or further away, it's entirely up to you. You can move it over the top if you want to. Again, completely your choice. You can really play around with these and customize it to your taste. Perfect. And now I'm going to do the same at the bottom. So I'm going to rotate this round to the right again, holding my shift key down. And then once again, just eyeballing that space at the bottom. And then the distance between this purple one and this blue vertical one should be roughly the same size as this gap here between the orange one and the vertical yellow one. So I need to move that over to the left And I think that distance there is the same as this distance here. Now once you're happy with your design, I would encourage you to make it into a group and that way it doesn't move. So again, select all of the graphics by holding down the command or control key. Go up to shape format, go along to group and select group. And now it will move around as one graphic. So the next thing that we need to do is to put in our text, but a lot of the text that I've used for my design is actually white. So what I do need to do is to now change the background color of my page. So if I go up to design and I go along to page color, click on the drop down 
and I'm going to select black. Now if your printer does not print out the black background that you selected for your page colour, then what you need to do is you need to go up to insert, shape, click on the rectangle again, go up to the top left corner and click and drag a rectangle out. Doesn't matter if it goes over the edges of your document. Turn it black so make sure it's highlighted and you can either go up to this icon here or go to shape fill and turn it black. Then when it's still highlighted go up to this send backwards icon, click on the drop down and select send to back. So those are two techniques to changing your page colour and sometimes it may or may not work with your printer so there's two different ways that you can potentially get around it. The next thing I'm going to do is to insert our text. So I'm going to go up to insert, go along to text box, click on the drop down and select draw text box. Then I'm just going to click and drag. Now by default all text boxes will come with a black border and a white insert. You can't see the black border at the moment because of the background, but we're going to get rid of the background and we're going to get rid of the border so all we've got is text. So let's just type in our text. This is for a summer fair so I'm just going to highlight my text. I'm going to go up to the home tab. I'm going to change the font. I'm going to increase the font size by using this increase font size tool here. And then I'm going to change the color of my font to white and it will magically disappear. Don't worry, click off the text box and click back on. Go to shape format, go along to shape fill and select no fill and just go along to the outline and select no outline. So now we've formatted our text box with white writing. Now all we need to do is just copy and paste it. But I'm going to use my alt key again, hold it down, click and drag. Now I'm going to make several copies of this to make all of the text and the reason I don't make the text all in one giant box is because it gives me the freedom to move each line around with my design. So I think I need five of these. So once I've copied them all, then all I need to do is just go in and insert the different text. So for this one, double click inside the text, Command or Control A to highlight your text, and then just insert the new text. Then I'm going to change the font, go up to the Home tab, change the font, and again I'm going to change the size of my text. So double click on the text, Command or Control A, and then use the increase font size tool again. Now if it jumps too much in terms of how big it gets, you can just input your font size here. So if you only wanted it to go up to let's say 75 or 78, you can just go up here, let's put in 80, press enter, and then it would just move in smaller increments. Let's just move that up. See, look, the great thing about these if you do it in individual boxes, you can just move everything around in it to suit you. So we'll come back to the alignment in a minute. You can see that that Y is not showing. And let's just input the rest of the text. So once you've got all your text inserted, then all you need to do is move it around and change the font sizes and then fully customize it until you're happy. So I always find one of the easiest things to do is to get this great big text in the middle to the place I want it to be. So ideally I want it to be around here. Then we can move everything else to suit around it. Obviously we're limited with space here and we don't want to get this text too close otherwise it will look a bit funky. Now if you do want everything lined up so it's perfectly centered double click on your text box again, go up to the home tab and go up to center. This will mean that the text is in the center of your text box 
and then we'll align them in a second. So again, double click in here, go up to home, center, double click on this one, home, center. And then all you need to do is hold your command or control key down again, select them all, go up to shape format, go along to align, and then align to center. And that will align all the central boxes up together. And because your text is in the center of your text box, it's all lined up perfectly. So that's the way to do it if you want to center everything up down the middle. You then want to group them. You can group them and that will move it around as one element. Perfect. So I hope you have a lot of fun with your designs. I hope it's helped you. If it has, please subscribe and have a great day.